Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a priest is a gift of God to the community and the church. He is an ambassador of Christ to his people. In his participation in the one priesthood of Christ, he becomes a channel of God's graces through the sacraments he celebrates, especially in the sacrament of the Eucharist. As the letter to the Hebrews speaks, he is taken from among men and made him representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. His presence and the presence of all priests shows us the unending love and mercy of God to his people and the church. With great jubilation and praise, we join our brother, his grace, the most reverend Adolfo Tito Camacho Eliana, Doctor of Divinity, Apostolic Nuncio to Israel and Cyprus, an Apostolic Delegate to Jerusalem and Palestine. In thanking the Lord for the gift of priesthood that he has treasured for 50 years, he will renew his commitment before God in the presence of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Terona, OCD, DD, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cáceres, together with his brother bishops. We all rise and let us raise our voices to God as we begin the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We thank God for the gift of the ministerial priesthood. We offer this Eucharistic celebration and thanksgiving to God for his loving guidance, for keeping the flame of love burning in my 50 blessed years of priestly life and ministry. I welcome with powerful thanksgiving his grace, most Reverend Rolando Tria Tirona, our dear Archbishop, and my brother bishops here, the religious, the priests, the people of God, the consecrated, and those who have come here to celebrate this occasion with us. As we continue to pray, especially today being the feast also of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and we, we ask that we may, each one of us, may be guided in our witness to the Christian faith and to the mission that we have all received, not only as priests or consecrated, but all those who have been baptized. And we ask for greater holiness as we strengthen our commitment to the gift of vocation. Brethren, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own, chose me com for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ, and for the ministry of your church, grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel, and a faithful steward of these mysteries, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. The prophet Isaiah prophesied who the Messiah would be and what work he would perform. This manifests the Lord's glory. Let us listen to the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication from our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness instead of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of justice, the planting of the Lord to show His glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing of your love. Forever will I sing. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing of your favors of the Lord, I will always sing, I will sing forever, till the end of time, O Lord, through all generations, I will raise my voice, I'll sing with exultation, and worship said, My kindness is forever, in heaven you've confirmed your love. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord, forever I will sing of your love. I've made a covenant, I have made my vow, with my chosen people, I will never leave your side, I've sworn to David, my faithful one, my faithful 
faithful servant. I will be your God. say of me you are my Lord. you are my father you keep me safe and warm my god my rock keep me all my days my salvation Posterity and make your throne forever more. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing of your love. high priest entails great responsibility in the eyes of both God and men. He is also a symbol of power, honor, and prestige. However, Jesus teaches us that a high priest, despite all these things, must remain humble. Let us listen to the second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in things pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided since he himself also is beset with weakness and because of it, he is obligated to offer sacrifices for sins, as for the people, so also for himself. And no one takes the honor to himself, but receives it when he is called by God, even as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself, so as to become a high priest. But he who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Just as he says also in another passage, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
please all stand to acclaim the Holy Gospel. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed by, about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for the blessing of the book of the Gospel. To make the sign of the cross. Please be seated. Let us now listen to the homily of His Grace, the Most Reverend Adolfo Tito Camacho Iliana. Dear Archbishop, my brother bishops here present, my fellow priests, sisters, brothers, and consecrated, and the people of God here. 
at this church of the Carmelite Monastery on 20th March, the day after the solemnity of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, I celebrated my Thanksgiving Mass that was 50 years ago today. I still remember vividly where my father and mother were seated. I recall on that occasion that I broke down in tears as I preached the homily and paused for a few minutes until I recovered my voice. It was a moment when celebrating the Holy Mass for the first time. I felt very strongly what I just received the day before at my priestly ordination from the hands of the late Archbishop Teopisto Alberto. This afternoon, it is with great joy that I relive that moment with all of you here present and continue to thank God for the call to be his minister, unworthy as I am. Providence also wanted my priesthood to be forever linked to the figure of St. Joseph, on whose feast, as I said, I was ordained a priest, as well as on whose feast I received my first Holy Communion at the St. John the Evangelist Cathedral. The figure of St. Joseph has always accompanied me in my ministry. Pope Francis, in his pastoral letter, Patris Corde, two years ago, invited us to meditate the excellent attributes of St. Joseph, the good and faithful servant open in faith to accept God's plan, silent and humble. Faced with the mysterious divine plan, he is understandably bewildered and frightened. Therefore, God himself, through the angel, encourages him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary. This invitation, fear not, do not be afraid, almost always accompanies the divine vocation with respect to those whose needs we feel so inadequate to fulfill. This reminds me of another passage from the Gospel which from the very first day of my priestly ministry has represented the essential point of reference for me. This is what we have just listened to in the proclamation of the gospel of today. It is the page in which the apostle Peter walks on the waters of the lake of Tiberias. But then, as we followed, Overcome by fear, he begins to sink until Jesus takes his hand and lifts him to safety. The day after my priestly ordination, before celebrating my first Mass, I was asked which gospel reading I would choose. I remember very well and without hesitation, I chose this particular episode in which I saw my entire future as a priest reflected. Let us go through this episode. The evangelist Matthew narrates that Jesus, after multiplying the loaves, leaves his disciples in the boat, perhaps, to allow them to fish during the night and he goes to pray alone on the heights surrounding the lake of Galilee. During the night, however, the sea is agitated and Jesus, seeing his disciples in difficulty, 
approaches the boats walking on the water the disciples were dismayed in front of this miracle and they were afraid that they were seeing a ghost but Jesus in person encourages them courage it is me do not be afraid Peter in one of his usual passionate outbursts asks for confirmation Lord if it is you command me to walk on the water and right here begins the scene that is so close to my heart Jesus accepts Peter's request without batting an eye and calls him to himself come Peter readily obeys that invitation and he took begins to walk on the troubled waters but then he commits an imprudence indeed a serious mistake he turns his gaze away from Jesus so to speak and loses contact with him instead of fixing his gaze steadily on the one who calls him he begins to see the strong wind blowing yes the evangelist surprisingly says exactly this Peter begins to see the wind that is he no longer fixes his gaze on the face of Jesus and begins to look elsewhere the result is tragic and immediate Peter is overcome by fear and begins to sink in the rough sea risking being drowned seeing himself lost Peter loses control and cries out in terror Lord save me that, that is he tries to cling to his only anchor of salvation Jesus in so doing however he returns to fix his gaze on the Lord on Jesus and the tragedy that now seemed inevitable is averted as soon as he hears Peter cry out to him Jesus immediately approaches him stretches out his hand and grabs him energetically and puts him to safety in the boat and only after having picked him up and taking him to safety does he address a moving word of reproach oh you of little faith why did you doubt yes Jesus first takes Peter back with him looks at him and envelops him with his merciful love and only afterwards he admonishes him so that he no longer has a lack of faith that memorable night will have remained indelibly engraved in Peter's heart yet even that lesson was not enough for him in fact we all remember how he on the night when Jesus was betrayed denied him three times and also in that circumstance it was the penetrating and merciful gaze of Jesus together with the crowing of the cock that pushed Peter to repent in tears as the evangelist Luke tells us we can still imagine something similar after the resurrection when Jesus asked Peter three times do you love me feed my lambs I think that it was Jesus's gaze even more than words that reached and penetrated Peter's heart and confirmed him in following him to the point of one day making him to give his life for the Lord here after 50 years I can tell you that the essence of the priestly life for me is summed up in this 
to fix our gaze on Jesus and never take our gaze away from Him. To fill my heart therefore with consolation, contemplating His gaze full of love for me, that gaze which has conquered me and by which I want to be conquered more and more as Saint Paul confesses in his letter to the Philippians. Yes, because I too, like Peter, have learned that looking away from the Lord makes me sink into the stormy waters of the world as I exercise my ministry and live my priesthood. Allowing myself to be enlightened daily by Him, on the other hand, allows me to walk in safety, supported by His command and unfailing grace. My brother priests, the priesthood, as you know, is truly a gift of grace. As St. Paul, the other great apostle and missionary of the faith, says, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and the grace he gave me has not been fruitless. The priestly ministry is undeserved gift for which I will never cease thanking the good Lord. We priests are entrusted with an extraordinary sublime and supernatural ministry, proclaiming the word of God, celebrating the divine mysteries, administering the sacraments, giving divine grace to the faithful. As the Pope said in the conclusion of the year of priests in 2010, and I quote, the priesthood is not simply an office, but a sacrament. God makes use of us, poor creatures, to make himself present through us to all men and women and to act in their favor. This audacity of God who entrusts himself to human beings also, although he knows our weakness, nevertheless considers man capable of acting in his name. This audacity of God is the true greatness hidden in the word priesthood. Unquote. How to thank the Lord for such a great gift? The only thing I can do is to strive to respond daily with my fidelity to the grace received. This is why I feel called to constantly fix my gaze on Jesus, our only Lord, the Good Shepherd, the supreme high priest and to draw strength and peace from him. Therefore, together with you, I thank the Heavenly Father for having called me to this sublime ministry and I entrust my priesthood to Saint Joseph who knows how many times he, as a good and affectionate father, will have turned his gaze full of love on Jesus first contemplating him as soon as he was born in the, hon, in the arms of the Holy Virgin, then seeing him take his first steps and respond with a smile to the blessing of a paternal gaze, then grow up and get lost in the temple among the things of the Father. And I imagine with how much love Jesus returned St. Joseph's gaze before seeing him close his eyes for the last time. Being a son of Bicol, I am also the son of our beloved Ina, our lady of Peña Francia, who through my 50 years in the priestly ministry has always accompanied and sustained me with her assuring, silent, powerful intercession, especially in the lands I have served her son, Jesus Christ, and thus making me feel that I am not alone, because like 
her son, whom she accompanied in all phases of his mission, so also has she done to all her children, especially to the priests. To Saint Joseph, the just and faithful servant of God, Mary's husband, I ask for the grace to fix my gaze on the divine Lord Jesus, so that the merciful gaze of the Son of God may ever animate and sustain my priestly life every day. With the psalmist, I raise my voice in prayer to the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices with my song. I will praise Him. Amen. Now, the Vicar General, Reverend Monsignor Rodel M. Cahot, will read to us the Testament of Merit on the 50th sacerdotal anniversary of Most Reverend Adolfo Tito C. Iliana, D.D. Archdiocese of Cáceres hereby awards this Testament of Merit to the Most Reverend Adolfo Tito C. Iliana, D.D., on the 50th anniversary of his priestly ordination in grateful recognition of his services rendered to the Catholic Church through the exercise of the office of the sacred priesthood. Given this day, the 29th day of September 2022, the feast day of the, of the archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, at Anaga Carmelite Monastery Chapel, Concepcion Pequeña, Pilgrim City of Naga, Philippines. Signed, the Most Reverend Rolando J. Triatirona, OCD, DD, Archbishop of Cáceres. We clap our hands in thanksgiving to God. Now, His Grace. Most Reverend Adolfo Tito Camacho Iliana will receive the blessing from the Archbishop as he renews his commitment to the priestly vows. The Archbishop, Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Tirona, OCD, DD, will impart the prayer of blessing. Please all stand. My brother Bishop, today you celebrate your 50th sacerdotal anniversary. For 50 years, you have given witness to the gift of the priesthood that God has bestowed upon you. Now in my presence, and also in the presence of this community, I shall impart my blessing on your 50th sacerdotal anniversary. Lord God, in your loving kindness, you sent your Son to be our shepherd and guide. Continue to send workers into your vineyard to sustain and direct your people. You are the source of every gift and talent. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you grant us your blessings that the church might be nourished and strengthened. Bless these, your servant, and enrich him and safeguard him from the abundance of your mercy. Strengthened by your blessing, he may always be thankful to you and bless you with an ending joy. May the power of your love and enable him to accomplish what is right and good. Guide his actions that he may be renewed in faith, united in love, 
bring to the fulfillment the work of his ministry to your greater honor and glory we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen Please be seated Now the Jubilarian will now receive the kiss of peace from the Archbishop Please all stand for the prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask our loving and compassionate Father to obtain for us the graces that we need so that we may have the strength to carry out the demands of Christian life and to become worthy instruments of God's love for all. For every petition we pray, loving Father, Hear the prayers of your people. Hear the prayers of your people. For the Holy Mother Church, that she may persevere in strength and courage in bringing forth the message of love in the midst of this hostile world. May her teaching be deemed as a perennial standard for promoting the value of the dignity of life of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. For the Pope, the Archbishop, the clergy, and all those consecrated for the service of God and humanity, that their zeal for the care of souls may be sustained by God's grace. May they persevere in living a life indicative of love and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. For all those who are in charge of civil office, that their task of leading the people be always governed by justice and love. May their intentions for the community be in union with God's eternal plan of goodwill for all and His glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. For all the poor, the sick, the dying, and all those living a marginalized life, that they may find comfort in the pastoral care of the church. May they recognize the meaning of their sufferings in the light of Christ's suffering and death on the cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. For His grace, Most Reverend Adolfo Tito Camacho Eliana, that he may persevere in his diligent exercise of the priestly ministry, May he be strengthened by God's grace in his work of sanctifying the people of God and in becoming the stronghold of unity through the responsibilities given to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. For all present in this assembly, that we too may become instruments of God's love for all humanity. May we become living witnesses of the faith that we have received through the words and deeds of charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. Loving Father, we offer you these petitions with the hope that your mercy and compassion will replenish our thirst for your abounding grace. Grant this 
in the name of Jesus the Lord and Shepherd. Amen. Please be seated. The liturgy of the Eucharist. Please all stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name for our good and the good of all his holy church we offer you the sacrifice of praise O lord for the deepening of our service for you and that what you have conferred on us unworthy as we are you may graciously bring to fulfillment through christ our lord Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should be convert, continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifices of human redemption. To set before the children the Paschal Banquet. To lead your holy people in charity. To nourish them with your word. And strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you. And for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faithful love. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and my brother, Bishop Rolando, the Bishop of this church, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be, or rather we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please rise. Let us pray. For the glory of name, your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Now follows the giving of the Testament of Merit. We now listen to the word of thanks by the Jubilarian, His Excellency, Most Reverend Adolfo Tito Camacho Iliana. I would like to take this opportunity before we conclude this Eucharistic sacrifice to say some few words of thanks. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our dear Archbishop Rolando Tirona, who has always been open to welcome me here and to make possible the celebration of the Thanksgiving Mass here. And I also thank especially my brother bishops, Bishop Manolo de los Santos of Iraq, my Lord, uh, Bishop Jose Rojas of Libanon, our good Joro, uh, Bishop Rex Alarcon, whom I found, whom I fondly call in memory of his uncle, Tito June, and Bishop Jose Alan Dialogo of Sorsogon, who was al already with me about a few weeks ago in the Holy Land. Thank you very much for coming here. And then I wish to thank the priests who have come here. I know it's not easy, but even if I'm 50 years old in the priesthood, it is a big encouragement when I see the priests still there because we stand, as we say, dying on our boots on. So thank you very much. I appreciate your dear presence here. And of course, the sisters and the consecrated people present here, you have always been, not only for me, but you have always been as, as a, a help, a big help for the priests and seminarians present here and also the Carmelites there because of your constant prayer and you never give up. That is why we have priests as we have now and even more. And I would like to say a special thanks to the Carmelite sisters, not that I know, who knew me when I was still in the seminary. And they have always been so motherly in my visits to them that I found them a family outside of a family. And always with, with, with warmth and love, they have welcomed me here, especially they never fail to pray for me. Thank you very much, sister. And I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, my relatives here present, all of you here in, in Bicolandia, and also those who have come all the way from Manila, from the family of the Iliana Santos who are here, with my nephew priest here present, celebrating with us. It is a great honor and joy that we can share together in this Eucharist. God bless you. And then, I would like to thank the friends who are who have come here, who are present, and especially those who have prepared the liturgy, the celebration. It was a big surprise for me 
because all I knew was the date, all I knew was my role, I do not know beyond that. And I cannot contain my joy in having seen you present here and for what you have done. The group that has prepared this, and especially those of you here present, among those of 50 years ago, I do not know if I see more than five of them. So that was long, but I still see here present. So we still live to thank God for his blessing. But the last, and of course not the least, is my second family that is always taken care of and has always gone out of their way to be able to assist me and feel at home. And this is the family I said, my second family, whom I introduced to the Holy Father in June, the Lucido and Ginhawa family. Thank you very much. All I can say is a prayer. May the Lord in his goodness, who cannot be outdone in generosity, reward you with countless and abundant blessings. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. A plenary indulgence is a remission before God of all the temporal punishment for sins, whose guilt is forgiven, especially in the sacrament of penance. Our jubilarian, the most reverend Adolfo Tito C. Iliana, and all of us, who devoutly participate and assist in his thanksgiving mass are granted a plenary indulgence according to the 27th concession of the new manual of indulgences. To gain the plenary indulgence, one shall perform the following conditions. First, sacramental confession. Second, Eucharistic communion. And third, praying of our Father and Hail Mary, or any prayer for the intention of the Pope. Please all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on the authority to govern that by the flourishing of the holy flock may come eternal joy to its shepherds amen amen as in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.